Alright, hello YouTube video viewers. Today I'm going to talk to you about the handshake problem. This is such a cool problem. So it's simply stated, it's easy to understand what's going on, you can experiment, all this good stuff. I'm going to I'm gonna ruin all the fun for you and explain it for you. But I encourage you, if you are so inclined, pause the video, try to predict what I'm going to say. Don't even try to predict what I'm going to say. Just, just think through it. How might you approach this? Alright, so first, what's the problem? All right, 10 people attend a meeting. Basically, there are 10 people, and they all want to handshake each other. How many handshakes are there total? Okay, so let's, let's get the brainstorm session going. How would we figure this out? It's what's cool about this problem. There's, there's a lot of different approaches to it, and they actually all end up connecting in some ways where you learn some things you actually would have no idea you'd end up learning, given what the problem is. There's some actually su surprise things you can find out. All right, so to start off with, it can be pretty darn useful with this sort of thing to create a diagram. Different diagrams, you know, for different folks, but let's just start with a simple one. Um, let's say we've got some dots, and by dots I mean people at the meeting. And maybe, you know, let's just label something in between them that is a handshake. And we could do lots of things, but let's just go ahead and make a segment. So, let's see, between A and A person and B person, between Alice and Bob, they've just made a handshake. And everyone else is jealous and they want to join in too. So Bob goes to Kathy and says, you know what, you're pretty cool too. Bob is so popular that he's just sh shaken everyone's hand. So Bob has just shaken four people's hand. Like he is, he is the life of the town. Um, and we could have done this in different, a different order, and you actually get something different depending on what order you go. And uh, I know that sounds weird, right? And then Alice is like, "Geez, Bob is getting all the fun. He's getting all the networking. He's he she's he's gonna get the internship before I do." So he's like, "Screw this! I'm gonna help make a star or or something or something a little bit weird." And um, I'm going to have three people uh, that I'm going to, f for whom I'm going to shake a hand. So how many, you know, Alice being like, you know, the go-getter she is, she actually added three handshakes. And uh, Kathy's like, you know, guys, you know, I'm, I want to join in, you know, finish up. Sure, I've got two people that have handshaked me. But by, by Kathy showing some initiative... She has shaken another two hands. Boop, boop, boop. And then Dave is kind of late to the game, just lets people come to him, and he figures, you know what, I'll, I'll shake my last hand. Okay, so why, why is this significant? Well, you'll notice that there's a, there's a pattern, right? Every time, you know, if, if someone else said, I'm going to shake everyone's hand, there was one less person, because the person before had actually shaken their hand. So there's a pattern, right? In this case, our pattern goes one, two, three, four for Bob, and then three for Alice. We're not going in order here. <clears throat> two for Kathy, one for one for Dave, and then you know this person left out is just a big a big zilch, a big zero. Sorry, <clears throat> That's, I'm just I'm just speaking I'm just spitting truth. Just a big zero. All right. So this is really cool. And what you'd actually notice is that, let's say we just consider these guys here, Miss, Miss C, D, and E. Um, well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't change at all, would it, right? I mean, so if, if all we had was these three people here, you, we would st it, would st it wouldn't change. When there's, when there's three people left, the, you can, um, each person contributes two and then one. All right. So this I know is just completely freaking mind-boggling, but the the idea. Okay, so we we did a model, right? We figured something out that when you have let's say five people, there's this pattern where the number of people that we said take initiative, the number of handshakes that happen are four at first. Right here for Mr. Mr. Bob, man, I, you know Bob, 
Bob really brings the, brought the room together. I have to say, you know, he got people going. And then three for A, and then two, and then one, and then and then zero. So, so that's one way of looking at it. So let's imagine one other person decides to butt in and says, "Hey, um, you know, you guys seem you guys seem surprisingly cool. I would like to network with you." And you know, see, this is you don't need business class. All you need is is handshake problem videos and other things. So there's five people, right? Besides besides um, Miss Felix. So, if so, that means, and we can we can assume it's not based on the letters, right? So, no matter what people I chose, it's still going to follow the same pattern: five plus four plus three plus two plus one. Okay. So we wow, we just discovered something really cool, and let's go ahead and take a closer look at this theory. All right, what would happen? Uh, I gave it away. What happens if you get to nine people? Well, the same pattern continues. And this, this by its own might be maybe not super surprising, but a little surprising that we just found out that the answer to our problem for 10 people is simply summing up the first nine people. So take how many people there are, subtract one. All right, so, so that was pretty cool. I'm about to introduce something that can be a little confusing. All right, what do we have here? It's sort of like we've got we've got um, nine rows that aren't quite the same number. Um, you know, if the if rows are the same, um, where this are the same value, then you can actually multiply them, and that's another quick way of doing it. So, is there a way we can sort of you know make things even out? I mean, we've got this nine over here that's the same as the one. Um, you know, how, how can we make it so this can turn into sort of a multiplication problem? Well, um, one thing I'd like to point out is that we can actually have another triangular number. This is, makes sense, right? This, this right here, it's a triangle, it looks like one, um, is actually the ninth triangular number. But we can actually rearrange how it looks, so now we've got twice the number, so each of these dots is a handshake, so these are handshake dots. If we take this blue triangle here, then we've got double the number of our handshake dots. But the difference is, now that we've got these rows and columns, we ha each of these being, all right, this is a row of nine, so now this must be 10, right? We've got eight and two. So each of these columns, excuse me, each of these rows is uh, a row of 10. And so now, now we can actually multiply. In other words, we can do 9 times 10. So our answer is actually 9 times 10. Ah, crap. 9 times 10. But there's twice as many as there need to be. So we divide that by 2. So what we've actually figured out, we've not only found out a new way of determining how many handshakes there are, but we've we've determined that there's two ways to write it. So now we've also found another way to write the sum of the first nine integers. So this, this may be, you know, if you're one of those lucky viewers out there, one of your first introductions to summations. So when you, can, when you learn how to sum a whole bunch of stuff at once. Now you could sum one to a hundred, couldn't you? If you just sort of use those same principles, you know, because it's, it's not going to change. Um, if, if this rectangle was ginormous, um, then, for example, let's say we summed up to 100, then what are you going to get? Well, um, the same thing. You're going to get, you would, you would get for 100 people, for 101 people, right? Um, it would be 100 plus 99 plus bunch of numbers happen, plus 3, plus 2, plus 1, which we learned is now actually equal to 101 times 100 time divided by 2.